Welcome to episode five of what's going on in the art studio. I'm Jack Fleming. I'm really excited to show you guys some of the stuff that happened last week and what's coming on this week. And I've got something too towards the end that uh, it's been on my mind quite a bit that I think is a good discussion for probably any small time art business. So one thing that I can't believe I didn't share with y'all last week, because it's pretty exciting, but I got the uh, title on it last week, is I got another van. <laughs> I got a 1991 Chevy G20 van. Um, it's not here with me at the shop today. I dropped it off at a buddy's to do some work that I can't do. I'm not a mechanic. He's going to do some engine work on it. And then once we get it back, i probably end up putting it on this because... Uh, It'll be here in the shop with me tearing the front end apart. I gotta replace control arm bushings. But to me, this is really exciting. For my business, already, only having it like a week, it's allowed me to move more stuff over here to the shop that I've needed to. We're looking to build this van specifically for the business. For me to be able to take to shows and vend out of, you know, bring all my gear, which I've been using my wife's Yukon. Uh, I outgrew my little shop truck. But I can put all the gear in it, and then for some of the shows that are camping shows or, you know, multi-day shows, I'm going to try and set this one up, maybe with a little air conditioner or heating in the wintertime, good ventilation, insulation, stuff like that, so that I can maybe save some cost on hotel rooms. Uh, again, should be a really good asset to the business. The downside of it for me, a little heartbroken, I guess, is... I think I'm probably going to end up getting rid of my 76 G10 uh, project van that I've had that unfortunately has been sitting on back burner because I didn't have a place to work on it. Um, I'm at a point where I could have brought it up here and I was getting ready to do that, but the need to have something now just kind of outweighed it. So you got to kind of make sacrifices sometimes, and unfortunately, I think that's what's going to have to get cut. Having the drawing table over here is a big asset to me. It's going to allow me to work more on posters here at the shop. It's already allowed me to work on the shirt design a little bit more. These are the things that I get to squeeze in in between customer jobs. I kind of always want to get back to them, and it's really hard to do if my biggest tool for them is sitting in a different location. Speaking of customer jobs, one of the jobs that I was able to get mostly done last week was these Wicked Thumb tanks. I got the shark face, shark teeth uh, design done. I've still got one more tank left to do for them. I was waiting on gold leaf for that one. That came in this week, or I guess this past weekend. Um, so I'll get that done this week. Other customer work that I got done last week, um, I got a motorcycle done at another shop here in town and I was also able to do a repair job for another body shop in town of some pinstripes on one fender of a car that they had. It's a lot of little stuff this time of the year. Summer is a little different. I don't get as many big jobs. Here in the studio I'm not traveling to as many shops and stuff. It seems like people kind of tend to take a little bit of a break during this time mostly because it's just I am excited to show you all though that this red piece, let's see if we can get the whole thing in the shot here, this red piece that I started I think what two weeks ago um, with the little panel jam deal that we had here in the studio. I finished it this week with a little bit of time that I had. Really pleased with how it turned out. Lots of details and stuff in this. This one will be up for auction next year. Had a couple of people already ask if it's for sale. It's not for sale from me, or even to benefit me. Again, this will go to the Dallas Autorama Pinstripers Panel Jam that we have, and the money that it raises, and all the other artists raise from their work and stuff, is all going to go to the Scottish Rite Children's Hospital over in Dallas. So, put that on y'all's calendars and stuff. February, would love to see you guys there. Come see me, come see the other artists wonderful artists and stuff that show up for that and we're always thankful for all the people that come we'd love to see it grow so spread the word on that one also excited to show you guys that this one that i kind of started towards the end of the last one of these videos you guys saw i did the blend um i finished it i actually finished it yesterday which was tuesday i'm a little delayed this week because of some family stuff that was going on but I love how the frame came out with this. I uh, 
sprayed this fade on here, did the splatter paint stuff, masked it off, painted the black, made everything kind of go together, and I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. Hoping to do some more like this. I need to get some more frames that would work well for stuff like this. So maybe we'll see some more of these in the future. The other super exciting thing that happened last week, um, Freddie Via and I have a podcast, Pinstripers podcast. If y'all are Pinstripers, should probably follow that. We're interviewing different pinstripers, mostly ones that have been around a lot longer than we have, and kind of getting their story, getting their take on the history, where things are going. And this past week, we were able to interview Bob Mahonick. Um, a lot of sign painters and stuff, too, might be really excited about that episode. A lot of people know him. Um, really, really good interview that we had with that. Super excited to share that with you guys. If you can, I know that we're on Spotify, we're on, I don't know, what is it, Google Podcast, a whole bunch of different podcast platforms. The only one that I know of that we're not on that we really need to get on to is Apple. I don't remember what their thing's called. <laughs> but uh, we've got to get on Apple products and stuff there. But really, really excited about that interview. Like I said, it turned out really good. Hope you guys will go check that out great listen and we're trying to get the ball rolling to have more podcast interviews more frequently and i think we're kind of getting back in the groove we had some different things going on part of it me moving into the shop this past show season was really really busy for me and then on freddie's end of it he moved so resetting up all of his stuff was a big deal as usual, I set a lot of lofty goals for the week, and I'm kind of okay with that. I hardly ever hit what my goals were for the week. This week's no exception. Got this giant hood in the background here that's going to become a sign for another shop. Hoping to get that done this week. I've got a helmet and hubcap to paint for a customer. I might have showed you guys that last week. Two sets of license plates to do this week. Got a motorcycle lined up this week. Just a lot going on in the shop. And then as always, on top of that, I'm hoping to get to some of my own personal projects because those personal projects are the things that are going to kind of help feed uh, what I have to sell in my booth for the fall, which I'm trying to get ready for right now. Got a lot of car shows and stuff lined up for that. Uh, another big thing that I want to do this week is get my list updated for car shows. All the ones that I've scheduled, plan on being at, get that calendar posted on Instagram. Probably whenever I get it done, I'll post it in the next video on this too. But that's something I hope to see you guys at. Hope to have a lot of stuff for. That kind of leads to something that I wanted to talk about on this week's episode here of what's going on in the art studio. I think I mentioned last week that at the end of these, I'm going to start trying to either show you guys a tip or something or discuss something that affects us either as artists or as, you know, creative businesses. And something's been on my mind, I guess, a lot over a while, and it's probably on everyone's mind as a business. And that's, we have different things that we battle as art businesses or creative businesses, really any business. And... They're all different things. I can't just label it as one thing. A good example of this would be um, when the pandemic happened. Uh, for people who are doing stuff like I'm doing, where right now I'm showing at a lot of car shows, it's slowed down for me right now. I don't really do a lot during the summer because of the heat. But during the fall and the spring, a huge portion of my income comes from setting up the car shows. I pinstripe at them, I sell merchandise and stuff at them. When the whole pandemic thing happened, you know, they shut everything down. There wasn't events. Made it a lot more challenging if you're a vendor at events to make that income. A lot of people changed what they were doing during that time. It's one of the things I think is really awesome about, especially artists, um, creative, small businesses in general, is we're adaptive, and if we're not adaptive, we usually end up struggling and our business dies, basically. Um, I saw a lot of people that switched over to doing a lot more online sales. That's something for me that I've kind of struggled at. I don't do really well with online sales. Haven't quite figured out the online marketing thing. 
but that's kind of part of what I'm talking about here. As a business owner, and specifically as an art business owner, I think and I feel that diversity in what we're doing is can be kind of our best friend. If we pigeonhole ourselves too much, it makes it really hard. If I only sold stuff at car shows, then I've got to be at car shows every single week throughout the entire year. That means this time of year when it's really hot, um, I've got to still be making just as much. And for me, I find that doesn't happen. When I go to car shows during the summer and I set up, the hotter it is, the lower my cells seem to go. I think people just don't want to walk around. Um, what's on their mind more if they're spending money and all is probably like a cold glass of lemonade or something as opposed to a black t-shirt or something. Likewise, something that I've seen some other artists struggle with here recently um, is, you know, like algorithms changing on the internet. I know multiple artists that are on Instagram and have a huge following on Instagram and here for them recently it's kind of been hard for them, or at least it sounds like coming from their ears, because they're not getting as much traffic as they used to. Something changed in that algorithm, and they don't have as many people putting eyes on their work. And without people putting eyes on their work, it's hard for them to make sales. As an artist, kind of the biggest thing that we have to do in order to stay alive is get people to see our work. If we want to keep making work, we've got to have money coming in you know to pay the bills to buy art supplies that's what keeps us being able to do what we do if people don't see the work it's never going to get bought if it's never bought it makes it really hard and that's when people end up having to go find some sort of other career i know sometimes there's other things that can get in the way uh whole plethora of them sometimes it's the economy things slow down because people maybe aren't spending money because they're not making as much money. Sometimes it's health, maybe it's your own health, maybe it's the health in your family. All of these things I think we kind of got a plan for. I mean, in my situation, I've got a deteriorating back condition. It keeps getting worse. I've had to step away from doing murals. I had to step away from doing basically anything that was on a ladder. I used to do a lot of window splash work and I was up and down and back and forth. It was killing my back. So we kind of, adjust right we change what it is that we're doing but we've also got to plan a little bit too and all right so what are some of the things that we can do um i've seen other people that have side businesses you know maybe they've got a real estate business or something that they do on the side i was looking at somebody that i know of that does that here recently um all sorts of different kinds of businesses and stuff, right? That you could have on the side. Maybe you've got a part-time job working for somebody else. One of the things that I'm shooting for um, is just having a variety of what it is that you, you do or different ways that you sell. You know, I've got my website. I haven't really figured out the marketing end of that. <laughs> Not real good at it yet, but I'm trying to figure out how to market that got products on there my prints are on there t-shirts kind of my game plan on that is if something happened to where I couldn't bend over cars and stuff and pinstripe anymore I could still make t-shirt designs right I could still make art that I can make prints out of and sell those at car shows and stuff or even art fairs maybe those go away still got the website right so that's one thing I know something that some other people get into is licensing you know license your artwork that means that other people can buy permission to use your artwork on their products there's some people out there that's all they do for the most part they just make artwork to license it's not a bad plan uh, i was talking to another artist a little bit this past week that was telling me how they sell designs as digital files on etsy and they're doing pretty well with that i've heard of a lot of people doing that pretty good the whole print on demand thing that is available now that didn't used to always be there you know you can make designs have them put on different products and sell those so that's a couple of different things um, look for different markets right don't totally pigeonhole yourself sometimes what it is that we do 
we kind of know who it is. I mean, I've niched myself into automotive, but every now and then I'll enter some art fairs or art contests that I'm maybe the only automotive artist that's there. And I've actually had pretty good luck selling at those events. There's a couple art contests that I've put stuff in and nobody sold anything there at the art show forum except me. And it's because what I have is completely different from everything else that's there. And likewise, I see that in the automotive world. Sometimes I see somebody shows up at a car show with something that has nothing to do with the whole automotive world, nothing to do with vehicles. And they do really well because not everybody that's there is there because of vehicles. Sometimes it's someone's spouse or something that's along and they see something they really like. I think some sign painters that I've seen out there are a good example of this kind of thing. There's some out there that love painting signs, but for them and where they are, they don't necessarily get enough work doing it. Uh, so they do other things as well, still making signs. Some of them use vinyl. Some of them just do print designs for logos and stuff for businesses. Some of them help market and brand other people's stuff. There's all sorts of different things. What I'm really getting at in this, though, is not to put all your eggs in one basket, I guess. It's good in the sense that if people know what you do and you're really good at one thing, work's going to come to you. But what I'm getting at is take what it is that you're in, that little niche that you've made, and find multiple ways to get it out there to other people's eyes. Um, find multiple ways to make it available to people. At least that's from me. I know some people were very successful without doing that. There's some people that, you know, only make original wall art that sells very well. It doesn't work for all of us. It hasn't really worked for me. I think we've all got a dream that something like that might work out. But until it does, I'm going to keep trying to find different ways to feed my family. And that doesn't necessarily mean that all I do is pinstripe cars or motorcycles. It means I'm also making things that I can sell, making t-shirt designs, which I love doing, making posters, love doing that, love doing wall art, trying to find other things, other markets for those. I guess that's kind of it. That's my big tip or not tip, rant maybe <laughs> for this week. Diversity. Y'all, I love having this channel. I love the feedback that I've been getting recently from people about these weekly in the studio deals. Lots of good feedback. Lots of questions from people about things to show you guys. I'll be working on that kind of stuff too. Stay tuned. If you like this, please subscribe. Hang around, watch one of the other videos that pops up here, and y'all keep creating, stay safe, and have a good week. Bye.